something about something. I don't know what about what, but something about something. He's always got interesting stuff to say because he's a rambling dude, you know. He's out there doing stuff. But we're going to kick it off with some music right here, right now. Uh, we're going to start with uh, the fraternity of man. And this is a message you want to take to heart here in this song, uh, if you would, please. Yeah, what you want? One bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. That's John Lee Hooker there doing that song for you. Great stuff. Uh, before that, the Rolling Stones doing Rocks Off. And we kicked it off with the fraternity of a man giving you the most sage advice you could ever want to have. Don't bogart that joint. <laughs> so, yeah, we got the video going. Now, uh, it, it came up during that set. I just kept on checking and checking and checking. And, uh, and, and it finally it popped up. So uh, I was able to get in there and, and get the video stream going. Thank you, Mogulus, the mighty Mogulus, uh, a.k.a. now live stream. I don't, they were Mogulus when we started. I, I don't know. It's been quite a while since they've changed the live stream, but I still remember them as Mogulus. Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, man, good times. By the way, and, and for anybody that is unaware... Um, uh, you should maybe make yourself aware because we we, we here at the uh, Freakers Ball have lost a dear and close friend of the show. Uh, his name was Marty, and uh, he he's passed on this week. Uh, Marty was uh, Moose Girl's little Jack Russell Terrier. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, not beyond being her uh, furry child. He, he was also a good friend of the Freakers Ball show. Uh, we we heard about him many many times and all the things. And so if uh, uh, yeah yeah the vid's going now, Moose Girl. Uh, so um, we're we're gonna miss you, Marty. And and I know you're probably up there in dog heaven, uh, do, doing you know eating all the milk bones you want and playing with all the various dogs and swimming and chasing squirrels and all that fun stuff. Uh, but well, but we're gonna miss you, Marty. Uh, you know, I, I it's a, it's a, it's it's sad for us to see you go, but I'm sure it's a glad thing for yourself. So uh, sniffing butts, yeah, sniffing. Oh, that video is no longer available. What a shame. All right. <laughs> Sometimes I'm digging back in my requests. Go back to like last August here. And that video is not available any longer. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know what this song is. I'll put it in there for the next set, though. Um, <laughs> video unavailable. Oh, that's a shame. All right. Oh, wow. That's a nice, nice long song there. All right. So, um, rest in peace or play in peace or sniff butts in peace. I don't know what, what you do, man, but uh, uh, you, you will be missed, Mr. Marty son. Yeah, yeah. So many times <laughs> we heard about you and ah. All right, I want to cover some stories here tonight. Let's, let's see what we got. Uh, I, I, yeah, woof, woof, woof. Uh, I think we'll start with this one, and I, and I know uh, I, I was trying to keep it secret, but somebody posted a link to it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I come across stories and I think, oh, nobody's going to find this before the show, so it'll be it'll be all new to them when when I get to it. But you know that's 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 often not the case. Anyway, here it is from the Western Journal or WesternJournal.com. Uh, scientists, you know those guys, um, have officially cloned a monkey. Officially. Now, it doesn't say it's the first time they've ever done it, but it says they've officially cloned a monkey. So, let's just go with that. So, and confirm it is now possible to clone you. 
Well, maybe not you. It says a human being. You may not fall into that category. Either way, China has successfully cloned primates for the first time, bringing science one step beyond, uh, one step closer uh, to making human copies in a lab. The Chinese Academy of Science Institute of Neuroscience in Shanghai successfully cloned a two, a two long-tailed. Is that what really correct? Two long-tailed makakaka monkey named Zong Zong and Hua Hua. <laughs> they have funny names over there. Uh, in a lab several weeks ago, the lab reportedly plans to conduct more uh, cloning operations, according to New Science, which would be NewScientist.com. It's been tried for so many years, and it hasn't worked. This guy, whose name I can't pronounce, said, director for the Center of Embryonic Cell and Gene Therapy at the Oregon Health and Science University in Portland, Oregon. He told NPR, this time it worked, which is a big deal. The breakthrough came when the Chinese team took DNA from fetal monkey cells instead of using adult cells like how the sheep dolly was cloned more than 20 years ago. The fetal macaque nuclei were then placed in a donor embryo. A donor? Really? A donor? Do you, do you think somehow uh, they went up to a monkey and said, hey, you want to donate an embryo? No, it was a stolen embryo and <laughs> grown in the wombs of a surrogate monkey. Uh, researchers use an electric coil to fool the eggs into acting fertilized so that it starts developing into an embryo. The embryo grows into an exact copy of the animal that donated, there's that word again, in the nucleus. Zong Zong and Hua Hua were both created from connective tissue cells taken from the fetus of an aborted female monkey. And again, I'm fairly certain the monkey, some monkey didn't go in there and ask for an abortion. Uh, the, the team implanted 79 embryos into 21 surrogates, and the two macaques uh, were the only successful pregnancies. The Institute said it expects more macaque clones uh, to be born in the coming months. Cloning animals could be effective in researching diseases and testing effective treatments on genetic conditions and cancers, the Institute said. Experimentation on the cloning humans remains illegal in most countries. <laughs> in most countries. But a successful human cloning procedure is increasingly possible, probable, I'm sure they've done already, plenty of them, uh, with the success of cloning primates. Humans are primates. Yes, we are a bunch of shaved apes. That's right. So the cloning of primate species, including humans, the technical barrier is now broken. This is actually the person's name, Mooming Poo. <laughs> a cloning program supervisor told reporters, Mooming Poo. All right, according to Robin Lovell Badge, an expert on cloning at the Francis Crick Institute in London, uh, human cloning remains a very efficient and hazardous procedure. What? Oh, inefficient. <laughs> I read that. <laughs> you just miss a couple of letters, and suddenly the word goes from being uh, not into two. Oh, uh, yeah. So it says human cloning remains a very inefficient and hazardous procedure, meaning, by what they're saying there, they've been working on it. They've tried it. They've done it. But it's inefficient and hazardous. It didn't say, oh, well, we haven't even tried human cloning because, well, that's that's bad. No, they say human cloning remains very inefficient and hazardous procedure. <laughs> what was that? What was that one aliens movie where they had all them uh, uh, clones that were like really disgustingly looking in the uh, in, in the various? It was one of the aliens, uh, Alien Resurrection, I think it was what it was. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
says the work in this paper is not a stepping stone to establishing methods for obtaining a live born human clones. Oh no, of course not. He said that that clearly remains a foolish thing to attempt. Not that that ain't stopping us. It's just a foolish thing to attempt. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have no interest in cloning humans. Believe you me, that's what they're telling you there. They want they want no part of cloning humans. Why would they do such a thing? They they don't want that. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> yeah, so that so there's that. Yeah, yeah, the one was the Winona Ryder. Yeah, yeah, Alien Resurrection. Uh, that was the one. Um, so Moose Girl's not gonna call in. I, I guess I can. Uh, oh, did I already close that? I don't see it up here. Oh, there it is. Moose Girl's not gonna call in, so I can close the racket too. But uh, Vinny is gonna call in at some point, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the Skyper. Oh. Well, I just closed the racket, too. If you want me to open it back up, I will. Um, oh, it's okay. Okay. Anyway, I just opened the Skyper for Vinny when he's ready, whenever he's ready to call in later on. Um. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's a straight, many, many heads are going to roll. Let's see whose, rolls head, whose heads are rolling now. Uh, Moose Girl put this link in here. She, she can be part of the show from the chat. Um entire USA Gymnastic Board announces their resignation over Larry Nasser scandal. You know why? It's because every single one of them was doing it. They're all a bunch of freaking pervs. All right, United States Olympic Committee threatened to strip the USA Gymnastics of its power to run its sport if the remaining 16 directors did not resign by Wednesday. USA Gymnastics team spokesman uh, has since announced the board will acquiesce to the committee's request, five board members, including Chairman Paul Perilla, Vice Chairman Jay Binder, and Treasury Treasurer Bitsy Kelly, have already announced their resignations. Resignations come in the wake of sexual abuse allegations, uh, pedophilia, pedophilia allegations, I should say, against sports doctor Larry Nasser. Nasser was sentenced up to 175 years for molesting little girls, including Team USA gymnasts. He also worked at Michigan State since 1997. Michigan State President Lou Anna Simon stepped down after calls to quit. Nasser was asked by the school to avoid being alone with patients, uh, yeah, while treating their sensitive areas. Uh, I would say, no, you don't want them with patients at all, at any time, for anything. Just don't, just don't allow that to happen. Keep that guy o away from children. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so, so anyway, that, that's it. The entire USA Gymnastics Board will resign in the wake of the Larry Nasser sex scandal after the U.S. Olympic Committee, USOC, threatened to strip the organization of all of its power if they did not stand down. They all do it. And, and, and this is talking about gymnastics, but you can be damn sure that this is going on in various other sports as well. Uh, any any of those. And so I, I don't know where that leaves uh, the rest of the actual participants of the gymnastic team. I imagine they'll get new coaches and trainers and doctors and all that stuff. Um, and they've got a couple of years before they have to worry about it. Because uh, this Winter Olympics starts in a week or so. A couple of weeks, I guess. Um, so the so so the gymnastics that's all summer stuff, uh, summer Olympic stuff. So they got like two years to get new people in there to train these girls and young men to uh, be ready for for their Olympics. But uh, I guarantee you, it's not just happening on on, on the gymnastics. I guarantee freaking to you. So um, thanks for that link, Miss Moose. <sighs> Crazy shit. All right, <laughs> we're going to play some more music here, because, uh, you know, we do that. We, we like doing that, and uh, and uh, and, I, and I'm good at it. I can play music. I've practiced at it for a while. <laughs> All right, this first song, it's an old request by Kate uh, from, like, September or something. Well, I was digging up there in the top of the list, so 
Here you go. A little bit of Chuck Berry for you. Speaking of perverts. Well, <laughs> sorry, Chuck. <laughs> and roll there for you from Kickin' Valentina with a song called Get Ready. Uh, before that was T-Rex Mark Bolin and the boys uh, doing 20th Century Boy and starting it there with the uh, Miss Kate request of Chuck Berry. Uh, doing some blues up there for you. A nice little uh, couple of tracks he, he, he mixed it there. Can't read the uh, little liner notes here. I, I guess they're not liner notes. I'm not reading it like an LP. Uh, the, the comments that the uh, author put in, because they're all in Spanish. Uh, <laughs> liner notes. <laughs> yeah, you all remember liner notes, don't you? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, funny. 420, and I'll be back, says Zin E. So, uh, I guess he steps outside. I, I don't know. I don't know. He goes somewhere else to, to do his 420 activities. It is not 20. So, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I, 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 just, I, just, I just don't know. <laughs> All right. Um. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. Ah, what was I gonna tell you about? I had some thought, thoughts during that last set. I was gonna tell you about, but you see, I have this problem. I, where I can't really keep thoughts in the old brain. <laughs> they, they vanish on me. <laughs> uh, like I'm living in a mist or something. I, I don't know how that happens. I, I don't know why that does that. But that's that's the way the brain goes, you know. Um, something about the brain. <laughs> oh man, I I know I had some stuff to tell you about. Let's see, well, the ten year anniversary is on. Um, of RLM, of Real Liberty Media, of, uh, and, I, and I, let me just uh, state this as clearly as possible because I, I don't really know the exact uh, date when we started hanging out here as a group, but uh, the 10 year anniversary of registration of the initial domain was February 21st, I believe, 2008. So we're coming right up on that. We'll be, we'll be 10 years old. Uh, although, I think it's been about eight years since everybody started coming over here and hanging out. We, we were hanging out in other places prior to that. Uh, we, we were hanging out on, on the Break the Matrix. And, and I, I know we were listening to some Break the Matrix folks here in the, in the chat the other day. And, and one, one we forgot, one key one we forgot to mention, uh, whether by just choice or, or I, I mean, it just it was so familiar we forgot to mention his name. Or something else, I don't know. But Uncle Ron, where the hell you at, Uncle Ron, man? It's been a long time. I haven't seen you coming around here. Uh, and so so uh, Uncle Ron, he did a great show, um, and, and he was a good pal. And um, he's, I don't know where he's at now. I, I think he might be up in Philadelphia, so somewhere up in Philadelphia at this point in time. He was a Florida boy for a long time, uh, good old Uncle Ron. He, he's a, he was a class dude. Uh, so, uh, wherever you are, Uncle. But he was there with uh, Break the Matrix with us. He was there at the uh, uh, Bold Voices. And he was over here on the Real Liberty Media as well. Um, and not too many of the Break, Break the Matrix folks. Uh, they they they, uh, they took themselves a little too seriously at Break the Matrix. They wanted to be something that they never really had an opportunity or chance to be. <laughs> And, uh, oh, that's right, there was the other one. What was Ebocker's, uh, uh, 
I forget Ebacher's network name now, but that's the reason. He, Jason Ebacher, he, he was there on the Breaks Matrix with us, and he's the reason I registered Real Liberty Media in the first place. He wanted to, to, to start a new site and, and was, was looking for suggestions for names, and that was my suggestion for a name, and I registered the name, and he decided not to use that. He decided to use some other goofy name that I didn't really care for. But I kept the domain name, and I put a, put a little site together over there, and I put the little uh, switchboard thing together over there. Um, and uh, so so that was all fun, and that was all cool. And um, then we went to uh, uh, Bold Voices with, uh, with uh, Meme Filter. Well, he had another nick before Meme Filter. I forget what it was. <laughs> See how the brain works? And a girl, a girl, the awesome a girl, and, uh, and and a bunch of other folks we had over there uh, as well. So that that was fun too. Um, and and then uh, well, we had some problems with uh, the bold voices, some personality conflicts, I guess you could say, uh, at, at at bold voices. And so we all came over here. And we're here. We've been here a long time. This is the longest one, uh, far, by far, of any, uh, of of Ron Paul Radio, of all all the different ones that we've been through. RLM has has held steady, held long, lived long and prospered. <laughs> all right, Vincent said he's ready to call in. But I don't I don't see him as listed as being active. Let me see what what's a, what, 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 what what would his name be? Vince Easley, I guess. Ow. Am I am I forgetting something, Cowboy Tech? I I, I don't know. Yeah, you, you act like I am, but I, I don't know what that means. Free media networks. Thank you, Kate. See, she's got a better brain than I got. <laughs> non servium See, uh, another 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 thing. That was that was mean. Filters old neck. Yeah, non servium uh, Anyway, let's call let's call Vincent and see what he's got to say. <laughs> said he's ready, so we'll see. We'll see what he's up to, if he answers his Skyper. That's a lot. I, for being ready, you don't seem too ready. Wait, there he is. Did he tune in? Are you there? Hello, hello, hello? Vincento. I see you're connected, but I don't hear nothing. <laughs> Vincent, can you hear me? <laughs> Just shout if you can hear me. Is there anybody out there? <laughs> oh, man. What? Uh... Hold on. I got I to gotta kill the player. I'll be back. Uh, all right, there he is. So he, he does live. Vincent does live. That's right. He back or had Rod Ball TV, but yeah, that was on Justin, right? On Justin TV back in the day. Yeah. So hey, you know, we've been through some times together. We've had a lot of fun <laughs> and shared a lot of information, oh. and, uh, and it's been a great time uh, over all these many years. And, and hopefully there'll be many more. And I, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. But uh, right now, we got on the line with us the famous Vincent Easley. <laughs> hey, Grimner. Happy happy birthday. Happy 10 years. Yeah, yeah. We're almost there, man. We're almost there. Okay. No, I, think I'm, Fe February I think I'm better. Go ahead. Fe February 21st will be 10 years. Right. 221. Or not uh, 2112. Rush. You can call it 2112 if you want. That's a, that's, that's oh, right. a great album. That's a, I love that album. <laughs> so Revolution Broadcasting, Kate, is uh, first heard Hal. You know, uh, I think Oracle is when uh, I first started catching Hal and um, kind of missed that I didn't uh, listen to him more until he really came over here to, to Real Liberty Media, and then Jules picked him up and, and brought him over to uh, UCY. Matter of fact, he occupies uh, the re replay uh, occupies Thursday night at 8 p.m. Central is my old uh, time slot of what matters worldwide over there, which uh, is pretty neat. And uh, so we're being uh, 
been here in Vegas uh, back and forth. I, I went out actually. Uh, I came back the first this week and went to uh, Lompoc, California. Uh, Dwayne Emer rode his horse. With, uh, <clears throat> well, he went over some passes in a trailer with him, but uh, rode his horse Hellboy uh, 1,100 miles down to Lompoc uh, to turn himself into the federal penitentiary. We got there minutes after and, and, he. Uh, what did you say, Dwayne Emer? Hmm. Yes, E H M E R. And and who is he in relation to whatever? Well, he he uh he dug a, a trench up there in uh, the Mauer Refuge during that occupation during 2016. Okay. And uh, so Judge Anna Brown up there has been generally handing down about a year and a day sentence to folks up there. Um, there was there was two trials, of course. That first one, uh, everybody was nobody was found guilty of any conspiracy, and um, that included Ryan Bundy, Ammon Bundy, uh, Shauna Cox, uh, Neil Wampler, uh, Jeff Banta, uh, David uh, um, <clears throat> for, uh, Doug Gum. David, uh, your your last name went right past me there. Um, we also had. Uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, boy, I hate blanking. Denise, I mean, uh, the, uh. <laughs> it's, it's in the air, oh, man. Boy. It's, 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 the, the, the brain, brain freezes and, and blanking, and it's in the air tonight. Yeah. You guys know who you was. And, uh, it, people have taken a stand, uh, up there. And, uh, now down here in Vegas, of course, there was, uh, dismissed with prejudice against, uh, Cliven and, and his, uh, two, two of his sons which would be Ryan and Ammon, and uh, Ryan Payne also. So, But Ryan Payne has uh, time up in, in uh, Oregon. I believe he took a deal up there, and he may have a year or two. Uh, but uh, I'm putting together a document now of all the people's names and their sentences and uh, where, where they're located. I have it partially complete. Okay, and, uh, clarify. I'll, I'll bring clarify, that back over. Cl clarify Pardon? something for me out there. Uh, yes. Uh, of the people that were just involved... Or just being charged from the Bundy Ranch debacle. Um, some of them had already or are already in prison because they took a plea of some sort or another, right? <laughs> yes, that's correct. Uh, well, the the main guy or the main sentence handed down was 68 years to uh, Greg Burleson, and he was convicted uh, not for anything he did, but for things he said while he was drunk. The uh, uh, FBI came along as uh, the fake uh, uh, journalism, uh, making a documentary uh, outfit called Foghorn, I guess I think it was. And uh, so they plied him with vodka and they puffed him up. What would you have done? Um, I, ironically, Greg Burleson uh, worked a couple of times as, as an FBI informant. So um, if if you think there's any... Uh, um, Loyalty to uh, to snitches, then I cite that as an example that there is not. No, but he should have he should have been wise to their tricks. Sure, certainly. Yeah, he's. Uh, what the hell is going on there? Oh, we're killing uh, people live. One of them live shooter things, I believe. <laughs> That's my friend's son back there. Screaming like a banshee over there, man. <laughs> yeah, I uh, it's tuned out of my brain. I don't even hear it. You know, I, uh, I think kids are meant to be loud, and uh, I, I encourage it and have gotten in trouble by uh, several adults over my lifetime. For <laughs> At church, they said I was a devil one time, I believe. <laughs> and were they wrong? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like to be devilish, I guess. But uh, no, you know what? What what we stand for here uh, is true freedom, and uh, uh, that's that's true expression. When we're when we're doing things and we're not hurting another, uh, you know, some people associate you know good and bad, uh, uh, good and evil, and so forth. But uh, that it's built inside of us. We know right from wrong. We know when we're harming somebody or or stealing something, or you know, rape and assault and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, things that are sanctioned by the government that could not be gotten away with by an individual unless they had uh, some type of authority of a, a badge and a costume. Uh, to Assumed be able to authority. Say it again. Assumed authority. Yeah.
They, well, assume, and they, they assume they have it, and they tell you they do, and if you believe them, that's, that's on you. Well, if you don't believe them, you can sure get uh, shot. Yeah, uh, I, well, no doubt about I, that, but I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, uh, first thing I do is remain calm and keep my hands in plain sight. And, you know, you, you really, when, when you're interacting with people, you don't have the same mind or, or whatever, better be real careful in situations like this. And I think it's wise that way you learn to engage one another, not by, uh, you know, going out some of these filming cops videos or, you know, just trying to entice them. But, you know, you're taking a chance of taking your life in your own hands. Well, and, and that's the world we live in. You know, it's been brought to this purposely by social engineering. And um, without a, a closer look, most people don't even realize, you know, why they think what they think. No, you're right. You're right on that. Um, I like to think. I, I, that's why they call me Ponder Gander. I just think and look. Think and look. <laughs> that's what I did out there in the desert. I sat out there and mostly did nothing but sit around thinking and looking. 11 days, and uh, I'm headed back out next week, and uh, I'll be back February the 8th at the Las Vegas Federal Courthouse again, where Mel Bundy, Dave Bundy, um, Joe O'Shaughnessy, and uh, Jake Ryan are uh, uh, coming back for to see how uh, Judge Gloria Navarre deals with their case, because they're the, uh, the other uh, round, the other tier. See, there were three tiers tried in Vegas. Um, first two trials were, were uh, you know, nothing except for we was talking about Burleson and some other minor charges. We got some people that took deals, Pete Santilli. Some of these guys are going to be um, coming up to their sentencing um, here this month and next. And uh, I'm sorry, February 8th is on motions. The, uh, the trial... Um, calendar call is February the 15th, I think, and uh, the trial date is set for, uh, I believe it may be February 28th. It's towards the end, end of the month. And uh, so last, this past week, uh, that 11 days went by so well, I, I thought I was well into uh, February, so I, I confused my uh, uh, when it was that uh, we set it back in there. But it might come down that she dismisses all that again with praise just before it even uh uh, hits a calendar call, or she may do it at a calendar call. But regardless, uh, I'll be standing by to uh, to be there um, and, and report on that. Uh, I wish uh, I wish I could live stream this to uh, our YouTube channel, but uh, uh, technology hates me, and so I, I do what I do. And thanks uh, <clears throat> to those that are picking that stream up and, and putting it over there, uh, Jay Grady, especially this last one here. Um, with with William Wagner, and uh, that's uh, on second thought. He's uh, he does public access. Uh, been in broadcasting twenty years. We uh, when we left uh, Lompoc, we went to uh, Santa Maria, and uh, the studio was closing. So and they had an exterminator coming. So we uh, we went on over to uh, uh, Mr. Wagner's house, and, and uh, <clears throat> he shot some professional video. Uh, and it ought to be coming up here on his YouTube channel uh, today or tomorrow, I reckon. Um, but it aired this evening uh, there in Santa Maria uh, to the uh, the public access. So that'll be interesting. I'll find that link. And, uh, again, Jay Grady thinks uh, they put that one out there. I got about a 54-minute with uh, some of the preparation to get ready and behind the scenes. And uh, Tom Lockevar Stewart came in on the live stream with me there and uh, talked about the 13th Amendment. <clears throat> uh, William Wagner has uh, quite a set of books from uh, way back when, you know, the original, um, some, some publications that show that uh, uh, from the 17 and 1800s, the original 13th, that uh, um, is a whole lot different than the one, we have, one that we have today on the books, so to say. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, I did notice that this one video of yours that you put up there, uh, the Las Vegas shooting. Uh, is, it, that, is that your uh, <coughs> that's yeah. your, your video, right? Yeah. Uh, I uh, met Jake Morfonios. Um, we had a little get-together after uh, the uh, 
uh, dismissal with prejudice. Then uh, Jake came along, and you know what? I'm going to tell you, <laughs> that guy's a he's a pretty nice guy. My I shot a video with him, and my camera ran out of uh, uh, storage and just quit, and that was it. And I said, well, <laughs> I said, there goes my chance of being famous. Dang him. <laughs> and he was counting enough, and we shot another one on this other uh, camera here that I had the phone. Um, and, and, yeah, that's, uh, what, four or 5,000 views? Yeah, 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 you're coming up on 5,000 views there on that. So yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty nice. And like I said, really a nice guy. Um, I, I've listened to him a, a few times, and uh, um, he's doing a pretty good work. You know, a lot of people, uh, he probably got a lot of uh, trolls. We see some of the comments on our video that we've got up here on YouTube. Real Liberty Media. Yeah. All one word. Now, I, I, don't, I don't know if you know or not, but YouTube has uh, uh, cut us off. Cold. Yeah, I'm not surprised. We're we're too controversial. Well, no, it's not that. Uh, they they they've changed the rules. Where it used to be, I think if you had a uh, hundred subscribers, uh, and uh, they don't, I don't think they had a, a limit on number of uh, like minutes of video watched within a week or something like that. But they've made that like 4,000 video minutes a week and uh, 1,000 subscribers. Or uh, so they, they changed it, so it's so it so it's it's all kind of fucked up. Um, well, good. I'm glad they did. Uh, you know what? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna take eight dollars <laughs> out of my pocket and I'm gonna send it to you for what they ripped you off. <laughs> for sure, our fun, our fun drive. <laughs> 85, 85 cents, I think. <laughs> No, I, I just, I just thought, I'm like, gonna, I'm yeah, you know, the, the thing is, it, it didn't matter <laughs> anyway, because almost every video we, we post, uh, they, they automatically market not suitable for advertisers, so it didn't matter. That's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so they, 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 didn't, they didn't like any, <laughs> it, I mean, it didn't matter what kind of show, Hal shows, <laughs> almost every single Hal show, they marked not suitable for advertisers, and what the hell is he talking about that wouldn't be suitable for an advertiser? I mean, come on. <laughs> Talk about some that will pass. <laughs> yeah. I I would feel kind of dirty if I was you if I had took any money from. Uh, well, I never. From I, they, they never gave like me. A they, they never. They never gave me a dime, so it didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Send them an email, and you can uh, you can include me in it. And I said, uh, yeah, prostitution is not legal everywhere. So. <laughs> I, I'm talking about prostitution or the prestitutes, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> I've given them a talking to these last few weeks, uh, last uh, few months here in Vegas, and <laughs> I had them cornered up in the, in the elevator down uh, on the 8th of this uh, this month here. And wouldn't but two of them look at me. Ryan Lentz from uh, uh, the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, Hate Watch, and uh, Maxine Bernstein from the Oregonian and uh I like both of them, but uh, <clears throat> Maxine is, is kind of, she, she looks at me, it's like, I, I just, I don't know what to, if I should, I shouldn't say nothing to this guy, like, you know, because I'm like the enemy, and uh, <clears throat> Ryan, he was real, uh, real hostile to me when I first met him, and, and he softened up, I like the guy, you know, just because we have difference of uh, but, uh, but, whatever you want to call but he, he, position. He's with the SPLC? Yeah. He's one of their main writers. Well, you know, that's the biggest hate group there is out there. Yeah, I know that. And uh, I don't know that they know that or not, but I know that you and I know that. <laughs> well, I just uh, if he's one of their writers, then he must be one of them. Well, he's got to be. Yeah. Now, uh, Dave Montero, uh, Montana, I, I'm sorry, messing your name up there, L.A. Uh, uh, LA Times, <laughs> he tried to pigeonhole me there. Uh, was it the 10th of... Uh, yeah, two days after Clive and Bundy was released, we uh, we met down in the sheriff's department. And uh, uh, Lombardo, he wouldn't come out. He wouldn't come out to talk. He well, he's not interested. And in, uh, you know what Hal talks about? What is peace? Peace comes from settlement in the law. And that's what that's what Clevin's asking for. He's asking for peace. <clears throat> and and the and the sheriff just ain't willing to. You know, he's he's part of this. Oh, guess what? It just pops to mind. Guess who's been put in charge? I just read today, not confirmed, but in charge of this Las Vegas shooting is uh, Myrie. 
this guy that just uh, violated uh, Brady violations, Giglio violations, uh, uh, gross misconduct. This guy's not only not being charged, he's given another job. Uh, it just boggles my mind. It, this is the biggest he's criminal the club, organization man. in the world. Say again. He's in the club, and 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 that, those club boys, they they just keep recycling them one spot to another. Yeah, sure do. So, but anyways, L.A. Times writer Dave, he's uh, he's trying to pigeonhole me on on an interview. And now, uh, John Smith, no uh, Ken Ritter, you know, tried tried to get, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to this word price. And I'm talking more about all these reporters and my experience with them. Uh, I call BS on y'all. Uh, you, you say you have rules and stuff of uh, uh, you, not being, uh, you know, one side or another on this. But uh, every one of y'all, every single one of it, and Maxine Bernstein as well. Uh, although I'll credit her for uh, withholding a lot of her in, in, interjecting a lot of her opinion. <clears throat> uh, she's done a real fine job of uh, portraying the, what went on in the courtroom as far as um, the procedures that went along. So <clears throat> definitely to her, I give her best in mainstream. But while well, I'm talking about it, let's get uh, Sherry Duvalli and Doug Knowles, okay, from Readout News and uh, Matters How You Stand. <clears throat> Those two folks right there uh, definitely brought uh, uh, the most pertinent uh, information. Doug Knowles with the uh, with uh, so many of the filings, and uh, Sherry Duvalli, very inspirational to me. She's a self-taught writer, and uh, I've got a list of uh, some books, and uh, um, I, I promised my, promise myself to learn to write more better <laughs> <laughs> this year, <clears throat> and I'm going to do it. So uh, uh, I've got a list, like I said there, and one includes uh, Stephen King. I wish I had it right in front of me, and I'm, I'm hooked up to wires here. I'd go grab my phone and I pull it up out of my message in there, but uh, anyways, that's uh, that's something I intend to do and uh, be spending some time uh, uh, out in uh, around Bunkerville there along the river. Uh, very nice. Uh, I, I ate a duck while I was there. Somebody give me a duck <clears throat> for all you duck lovers here in the chat room. I always <laughs> be friend of dirty duck lovers, dirty. <laughs> but it's a very special. Uh, uh, recipe I came up with. Hey, thanks, Cowboy. Uh, he's been doing real good keeping uh, all the uh, uh, posts over here with all that information on the uh, what's been going on. And uh, there's one from uh, John Lamb and the vigil up there in Portland with uh, Kelly Stewart and uh, met Sergeant O um, over in Lumpock and uh, snuck a kiss from her and told her I didn't know. <clears throat> I said, You don't want to make a liar out of me, do you? And she said, No, okay. So uh, I snuck her a kiss and uh, was good to my word that I said I was going to do it. <laughs> She's a sweetheart. Now, there's a lot of troopers. I'll tell you what. I, I could go on with a very long list. And um, I, I found myself in the company of some great and amazing people. And uh, my little bit that I'm adding um, is, is part of the record. Yeah. Thank you, Kelp. There's Dread. Look at him. Boy, he, yeah, he's a, he's a wussy man. He's talking about my camping. He was worried he might smell. If uh, I think if he had to do it for very long, somebody tell him what we're on the radio. Who? He better tune in. T oh, he's, he's probably tuned in. He's 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 he usually tunes in before he gets in the channel. Yeah, yeah, I, see him there. Uh, about. I see him on the stats in Franklin, Massachusetts. Franklin, huh? Freewheeling Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> I remember him. Really? Fast Freddy, Freddy had a cat, too, didn't he? Fa fabulous Furry Freak Brothers, did that right, man? Right, right. <laughs> I remember the comment. <clears throat> yeah, he's listening. I, I'm a little bit horse. Uh, yeah, you're a pony. A little and there's Flash. Hey, 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 my brother Flash. Yeah. Okay, so now let's see. Let's get back to some of the media here. <clears throat> there at uh, the 10th of this month, there at uh, the sheriff's station over at Martin Luther King in Las Vegas, Nevada, baby. Um, the sheriff wouldn't come out and talk, but uh, 
uh, Cliven spoke for a little bit, and then he says uh, <clears throat> he'd take questions from the press, and uh, some hands went up, and uh, Ken Ritter, he, he goes to ask a question, and uh, I just stepped right on up. I said, I believe I'll take this one. <clears throat> so uh, I, I started the round there for for the true press, and I scolded some of them. I told Channel 8, I said, uh, I said, y'all better put all this up. They did. They put 45 minutes of that up there. Uh, hey, good. <clears throat> and I said, y'all better put all this up there. I said, don't do you like you did uh, Mrs. Bundy over there and cut her statements out and trying to uh, pick and choose and make it sound like you want it to sound. <clears throat> so they were listening. Uh, the press has been listening to me, the, who they called the, uh, uh, not, or, yeah, as me referring to myself as media. So I've been quoted a few times <laughs> if it was out <clears throat> Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they're listening. And, uh, I called them out. I said, y'all ain't getting away with this. You're not. Right. I am a horse. He, well, he, he may be a horse, but he's still hung like a gnat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to mute just for a second there as I choked a little bit. <clears throat> <laughs> now, let's see here. Uh, where were we at? Oh, I talked to a few people there. Uh, I, and that that brings me to this point. I need a producer. I need help. Somebody to take the videos and put them up. And uh, especially I'm headed there back to the desert, and I'll be back and forth. Um, and it's going to be an impossibility. I'll be working off a of phone. Yeah, uh, you know, you know what's funny. You know what's funny. Huh? You, you're sitting there in Las Vegas, and you say, "I'm going to be headed back to the desert." <laughs> <laughs> oh, along the river, out there, and uh, it's about eight miles from here. Yeah. And, and you know, I've uh, well, well, I've, I sat in there back in 2014 and and pitched a tent, and I was back and forth and stayed out there a few weeks. Um, it's a nice little place. It's a ghost town, Riverside. I, I shared the, the map and some pictures there a little earlier today. And uh, Chloe, she uh, she wanted to know where that was. How you get a duck out in the desert? Well, <laughs> I fly along that river. <clears throat> yeah, and there were some crazy killers coming out there, and I believe they had rocks and everything, just throwing them at them ducks. And I think they knocked one down. Anyways. I got a hold of it and put this. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all my recipe. There it is. Cowabunga, no, Cowadunga orange duck. And uh, now I'm going to tell you about this uh, this poop out here from these cows. It benefits in so many ways, not just that it recycles uh, the nutrients back to the ground. And not only does... Uh, uh, it, it give nutrients to the ground. If you happen to come along and needing the survival food, and you couldn't catch a cow, yeah, it, but you got the tail end of them. That fresh dung right there, you can eat, and the tortoise eats it. Now, wow. this the crutch right here, the tortoise, right the cattle battle, the tortoise two step in the stocking uh, horse hustle. That, that's what we're playing here. And I run into this guy. Kieron Suckling, and what a name, Suckling, uh, the Center for Biological Diversity. He's the one who set this whole thing off by getting the tortoise declared to be endangered and saying the cows is hurting it. Now, I'm going to tell you, not only does he not hurt them, but he helps the tortoise and the hare and the coyote and the fox, the mountain lion, the bighorn sheep, uh, all the little grazers, the jackrabbit on down to the grasshopper, they're all helped by the cattle on the land. They break, they graze this back, this, this browse out here, and the fresh shoots come out, and that's available for other animals that could not otherwise uh, stomach it, so to say. It wouldn't be near as palatable, and they <clears throat> just couldn't eat it and get the nutrients. That's why you get that poopy right there. Nutrients to the ground, fresh to the tortoise. It's like a delicacy. Now, this study uh, by Curon uh, Suckling, Center for Biological Diversity. Tom put up a video of me uh, giving him a talking to here back uh, the 20th of December when uh, uh, Navarro declared mistrial. 
first off, she started with mistrial and then went to the full dismissal. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, he's saying that the cow has harmed the tortoise out here in the desert. But when you look back through history, you'll see these larger grazing animals that roamed the plains. You'll see that the tortoise was even bigger because he, he was helped even more because there were more animals grazing the land. So there is a study of some 300 years to uh, <clears throat> testify to that. Just look it up. Use your search engine. You can find it <clears throat> real easy. So anyways, that you don't see uh, cows out there stepping on tortoises. You know, they don't step on rocks on purpose. Maybe if they was in a, a stampede, you might get one or two that might get kicked off a cliff or something. I don't know. But most generally, you're not going to be seeing any of the tortoises of being harmed by the cows. So it's all a lie. It starts on a, with a lie and gets even worse. And, I, and I'm going to tell it like this. <clears throat> now, well, now, dirt. I mean, let me just tell you this. Okay, he said, he goes out, he makes his whatever statement that these cattle are hurting these tortoises. He doesn't have to provide no data? No, no, well, no proof? What do they say? Uh, Liars figure and figures lie. So you know these studies, yeah, they're 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 slighted. He, they 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 specialize in suing the government over environmental issues, right? And then they get these laws passed. But it is go back again to the stalking horse, the the, the stalking horse approach. Hey, you know we, we see example after example of how uh, of a snail darter minnow has been used as a, or or a, a salamander or, or the spotted owl which tastes like chicken or so and so um, <laughs> being used to uh, get people off the land um, lies all lies and you know I want to scream out like uh, uh, on that movie uh, with. Uh, who is it, the spy that shagged me, the, the German later? Lies, all lies. Hans, you can do that voice for me. Somebody kill that duck. Oh, good shot. Yeah, there's a killer right there. Yeah. Uh, uh. Well, do you uh, you want to take uh, some uh, uh, radio time to play some music? I or? do. I'm ready to do that. Okay. Good. And you want to come back or you want to... Sure, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's come back after. Okay. Well, I'll mute up and uh, I'll listen right on in. All right. Thanks, Well, let, now, let me tell you. I mean, let me ask a question okay. before you go there. Because uh, in relation to the first song I'm going to play here, um, yeah, you're, you travel late. You're a, a, you're a rambling dude. I'm a rambling man. So uh, is it is it possible? Have you ever asked yourself... Will, will a matchbox hold your clothes? <laughs> you know what? <clears throat> we, we can talk more about that after we come back. But you know, the sudden is the, the heaviest thing that, that you carry with you are clothes, um, generally. <laughs> right. And I tortillas <laughs> is your choice for bread because they travel flat right with you. Yeah, and they don't get smashed. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, here we go. Uh, Johnny Lang with his version, quite unique one, of Matchbox. <laughs> the Texas Hippie Coalition, THC there, for Beth Z, pissed off. And mad about it. And, <laughs> Papa Chubby before that. Uh, doing some good old rock and roll. Good time rock and roll. Good golly, Miss Molly and Lucille. Kicking it off there with uh, Johnny Lang and Matchbox. Uh, yeah, he, he, threw that, he threw that mic stand right at you. Uh, Want a taco? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. It hurts. It hurts. So, uh, Vinny, are you there? Are you there? Are we over there? I know you're still connected on the, on the Skype line, but... Uh, yeah, I'm here oh. going to uh, kill this here uh, player again. Okay. 
All right, then I'm back. Let me turn up some volume here, and I uh, believe I got you back. I've been over on uh, tweeting around on the Twitter sphere, and uh, Hal Anthony uh, behind the woodshed. He's a listening in. I can tell. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He does that. <clears throat> okay, so I'll scroll back down here to chat, and uh, I'm back. So there, he's got us. Uh, Shows the uh, another tortoise flipping another and upside down. Now, it it now, might have now, come after I. Uh, well, let me ask you this: You, you, you told okay. us about your uh, your duck recipe. Uh, what do you, What do you got as far as the tortoise recipe goes? Well, um, now understand: <laughs> there's the tortoise, the turtle, and the terrapin. Okay, or terrapin. Terrapin. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, but they say there's seven kinds of meat in the tortoise or, or the turtle I'm, or the tortoise and I, or the terrapin. I forget which one it is, but I believe it's a water turtle, which would be a, a terrapin. And they're all pretty much the same, but uh, some people get bent out of shape if you call a tortoise a turtle. Yeah, I ain't one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are uh, they're out here in the desert. Now, they rounded them up. Uh, Harry Reid had this thing going here. You know, he made a lot of money in real estate out here in this part of the world. <clears throat> come as a come up as a poor boy out of Searchlight, Nevada. But anyway, so they rounded up all these tortoises and they <clears throat> put them in enclosures. And uh, next thing you know, well, there wasn't a million tortoises. That's what uh, Kieran Suckling, I call him the Suckling Pig Man. <clears throat> he said there was never a million of them, but I'm too loud. Yeah, you you are louder. I I, I, I turned my headset down, but I thought, well, I, I can I can adjust you from over here if I need to. Um. Well, anyways, uh, so yeah, he says there wasn't a, never a million, but they they overpopulated, they, and then the next thing you know, they're killing at least hundreds or thousands of these tortoises that they they was protected species, and then there's too many of them and. Dag Dem had to kill some. I asked him if he was involved in that. He said he wasn't. He says no. But he's filing a new lawsuit now about the cattle. I just read uh, here earlier today or yesterday. And I've also, well, of course, I've, I spoke with Larry Clayman in uh, uh, December the 20th, and that's when he told me that uh, uh, two things you're going to do is going after this uh, issue about the uh, land being uh uh, state land and not federal, and then he's going after uh, um, my my uh, Stephen Stevie Myrie uh, to have him disbarred. We was talking about that earlier, uh, I, and I didn't finish. Didn't, um, I, I don't know that people take this wrong, but uh, th this is kind of the way I've uh, described it. It sounds like a movie, uh, one made here in the the back streets, uh, back alley, seating hotels here in Las Vegas off the strip and it's called the uh, dirty den loves backdoor dealings coupled with my my stevie myrie's don't ask don't tell policy and let's see if i can finish this uh yes uh gets go go glorious hole a lot deeper and much more darker does that sound like a movie, movie description here made in Las Vegas? Uh, rooms, it's true. By, rooms by the hour. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> but who's screwing who? Yeah. Okay, so tell me about this duck. duck. What did you ask me about the duck recipe? Uh, well, I said you gave us your duck recipe, and that was, that was, yeah. that was fine. But I was, I was looking for a tortoise recipe. Okay, so, well, uh, I cooked the duck with dung, and I guess you could do that as well with the tortoise. And like I said, there's seven kinds of meat inside. Uh, I don't know what kinds they are, but uh, I think they're really all tortoise or turtle meat. Well, I would I hope so. If that. they're inside the turtle, I, I would hope they'd all be turtle meat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what they say about the spotted owl, again, tastes like chicken. So there's part of it tastes like chicken, part tastes like pig, one tastes like cow, and there's four more, and I'm only guessing maybe that it would taste like bear or possum or coon, uh, and I've ate all of those critters before, but uh, some of them ain't so good tasting. You kind of really got to get past the idea of what you're eating, I think. Uh, I would imagine so. 
Yeah, I mean, getting past the dung part would be a... <laughs> you know what? In 2011, when I kept up here in the uh, Arizona Strip, uh, I, that's the first time I cooked with dung like that. And uh, I made me a little oven uh, and, and cooked in there potatoes and onions and, and garlic, carrots. Uh, man, it really, honestly, gives it a very unique and, and a delicious tasting flavor to the food. The dung does. And you got to realize all it is is dried uh, grasses and, and the flat manner that the cows eat, and then it you know dehydrates, and you've got these little charcoal blocks in a sense. Well, I, I know that uh, the, the, the pig, well, I, the place I used to work at this ranch when I was a teenager, and uh, the the, uh, the loading ramp for the, for the cattle went through was through the pig sty. And and the pigs would follow them them uh, them them cattle around, waiting for them to plop one down, and they'd just eat that steaming pile of crap right there out of the ground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All parts are edible. That's what Yule Gibbons would tell you. Yeah, well, you know, Mary, Grammy Grammy Mary was talking about Yule Gibbons earlier this this evening. <laughs> and I was listening. Uh, and, uh, uh, so let's see, tomorrow's Saturday, we got uh, the dork table, and yeah. uh, then Cindy comes along, and I will... Now, I think now tell, me this, tell me this, tell me, oh, so you talk about Saturday and, and shows here on RLM Radio, and it's been a while since I've heard from her. Maybe you have. I don't know. Where Where, where, where is Miss Carrie Young? She's still working. <clears throat> and uh, I think it's been maybe a month since I, I talked to her, but... Uh, um, yeah, she's she's still hard at it. Uh, yeah, a lot of people, uh, for one reason or another, come and go on radio, but uh, she'll be back. Uh, that I'm pretty sure. All right. Just wondering. I, I guess I, have a, I haven't heard from her for a few months now. and She's still over on Facebook um, and, of course, uh, her YouTube channel. And we have her playlist here at Real Liberty Media on the, uh, our channel here at YouTube. Right. There, um, she so she was pretty uh, involved with the uh, No Dapple up there in the North Dakota on the pipeline. Very, very involved, yeah. deeply into it. And uh, Hal and I, we uh, we inserted ourselves, or I inserted Hal into it, I should say. <laughs> and, and, so, and we both pretty much were saying the same thing from the very beginning. We we knew they weren't going to win. They weren't going about it right again. The stocking horse. Um, uh, well, I, see, I actually see, now, a, now, now, now there's going about it right and doing the right thing, and they were doing the right thing. I mean, maybe not in the way that the uh, government would, would <laughs> see it to be the right thing, but yeah, that's right. The, the, it was the right thing for the for the for what it should have been done. Is that those that that pipeline should have never been through there? Well, that, see, we get to the thing right now where we're looking at. Uh, people fighting over, you know, uh, jobs that are created by the pipeline and the drilling and the fracking and, and all that. And, and we, we missed the point of uh, should we even have to be using, you know, dead stuff out of the ground to uh, for the energy? Uh, and, and why uh, there's so many people in the world today and, and why life is, you know, relatively easy, easy for uh, e- even the homeless. I mean, um they, there's places to be, you know, eat. It's not easy. I'm not saying that. But uh, because of the cheap energy from dead stuff out of the ground, the fossil fuels, um, it, it's made life a lot more easier. There's more people. It's easier to get along. But there's other stuff. And, and I saw, who was it? I think Frumpy was talking about uh, somebody's claim to free energy. But uh, there is available energy sources out there that, are not utilized and, you know, patents are bought up and they're squashed because, uh, you know, it's rigged. The the petroleum industry, they they even get the medicines, um, you know, the pharmaceutical medicines they extract out of uh, uh, the petrochemicals that uh, uh, are in the ground. Let me me just say this about all that because, first off, I love oil. Uh, Oil's great. It's an absolutely awesome resource. And I think use it as much as you want. It's great, but while you're doing it, take care of the environment and respect people's rights, their property rights, 
and other such things like that. Now, calling it dead stuff out of the ground and believing it to be fossil fuels, I don't buy that for a second. I, I, I do, because I have evidence. Well, yeah, but the evidence is, is, as you know, not always true. <laughs> but from my own observation, I'll call that evidence because, and you know, I've been laughed at when I say uh, I'm a scientist. Uh, I've been laughed at when I say I'm media, you know. I'm, I'm not the, uh, you know, uh, with the cre accreditation or anything like that. And then, uh, certainly other people's work are, are much better than mine. But as far as observation and, and so forth, uh, I, I would make statement that when you find fossils in coal, you know, it was uh, stuff was buried deep and fast. And uh, the way that the, the stuff is processed, you know, is... Uh, well, you can look at coal turning into a diamond. Lots of pressure. Um, right, but just because you find just because you find fossils in coal doesn't mean the coal is made out of fossils. Well, it, it doesn't. And abiotic oil is a much more uh, reasonable explanation of where the oil is coming from. I, I've I mean, I mean just, think, think of how much oil the, that is being used on a daily, annual, whatever kind of basis you want, and how long it's being being used for. And you, and you think there were that many dinosaurs roll, roaming the earth to produce that amount of oil? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. What was what were their dinosaurs eating? And you can look at the fossil record. You can see dragonflies with three foot wide wingspans. You can see you know little plants that were humongous. Uh, little animals that were humongous. There was it was a different world at one point in this uh, existence of uh, the universe and the earth that we uh, abide on here, uh, and it was covered with less vegetation. It was, uh, it was a tropical greenhouse um, worldwide. Um, and one day something happened that that changed, and I've uh, I've spoke to that and given good study to that. And there's evidence of. Uh, absolute evidence of worldwide flooding that uh, everything was pretty much destroyed. And uh, this is a remnants of a broken world. Okay, pretty, pretty well, anyway, that, that, we don't want to talk about that. We're talking about the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole Dapple situation. And, right, and, and, and you know, if, if these companies would, would just treat the, the environment well, the land well, the people well, the people's rights, uh, land rights, uh, and and not act like they they have some kind of uh, eminent domain over these people, which they don't have. They're they're a private company, uh, and and they can't claim that. Um, although they're allowed to, because they pay off the government to say this is what's going to happen. So yeah, I, you know. Um, so I, yeah, like I, I, said, I, love, I, I love the oil, but it, it's 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 the way these bastards uh, deal with folks that that that's the problem. Yeah, it, it's set up like that, you know, to favor the, the corporations, of course. Um, and I worked in the pipeline industry. I built pipe. I uh, was an inspector, and uh, I know the procedure. And uh, somebody was saying a day or two ago that uh, they thought they only had like a seven-year uh, liability on the uh, the pipe. But uh, actually, uh, once it goes in the ground, it's pretty much, uh, you know, nobody's at fault after that. <clears throat> and I know that shortcuts that are taken, uh, I know where the damage, uh, you know, is. It's not if it's going to happen, but when it's going to happen. So, uh, and like I said, Hal and I both saw through at the beginning that uh, where they were leading them off and are in the wrong direction, they sent their stalking horse third party in there to uh, convolute it and get people off uh, chasing, uh, uh, going down rabbit holes. And people think that, you know, it's good to go down a rabbit hole. So it's good to sit up on the hill and watch the rabbit holes and see where they pop in and out at. And uh, just like shooting a duck, uh, in the same sense, you, you're going to know their pattern. Uh, so y'all over there, quit, quit befriending the ducks. Ducks <laughs> are pretty, do not like you, I promise. No, they don't. They'll bite and your ass. you ever had a swimming pool and a duck, just look and see what they'll do to that water. And by the way, when I ate that duck, now this is going to be a little crude, but so plug yours if you're offended by crudeness. But I swear, when I farted, it sounded <laughs> like a duck. I'm not lying. It smelled like one too. I bet it did. 
he was like his life force was trying to get out and his escape out in the butt. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, that's that's probably more information than what we needed. But <laughs> well, it's true and it's funny, and I just had to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's recorded for all time now. <laughs> yeah, Duck Man Vinny, <laughs> the Duck Commander. <laughs> Huh. Well, what do you think, Grimner? Well, I think about what? About anything. Uh, are we are we ready to move forward? Uh, yesterday, uh, down 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 uh, Fremont Street off Fremont Street, I was out roaming around. Uh, a buddy of mine out here from Arkansas, I went to uh, go meet him. He come out for a few days to donate some money to uh, the cause of Las Vegas. <clears throat> and uh, anyway, so I'm. I'm headed uh, around over to the dispensary, which is a pretty good walk. And uh, I see these couple of young cats, you know, like the rainbow generation, the uh, fifth, sixth generation deadhead type, you know, people. And so I turn around, I go back and uh, uh, share some things with them. And, uh, you know, the, they're, they're such a divide, you know, and people have, have accepted it and they don't see where we're the same. But uh, generally, when I talk to people like this uh, and others, you know, I can can bring that common thing that we have in common and, and show that. And that's that's where we need to be looking for, um, you know, hating cops or hating government uh, and the people that occupy them positions and, and making a, uh, I tell you, if we come to a civil war, it's going to be very ugly. And we don't want to, we, I, I, definitely, we don't want to see that. Not in our lifetime, or not in the uh, in future generations of our our children. We want to do everything we can to to fight this and to, and to fight it right, and uh, fighting each other as part of their plan. The divide and conquer is as uh, as old as the the Roman Empire and and, and beyond. Well, just, so. just like just like the Roman Empire and all oh, so many others. America's on the same track, United States of America, on the same track, uh, where they will eventually, through their uh, arrogance, collapse in upon themselves. Now, uh, who knows when that'll be? Um, it could be any any time, actually. Since uh, I mean, if if the if the American dollar, the Federal Reserve note, uh, becomes second rate. At some point soon or any time, um, well, what do you think? What do you think this country will look like? I, I think that's part of the plan. First of all, to collapse the dollar, and we're going to be a third world country right here. You want to come to Vegas and, and, and stroll around and see the, the homeless uh, cities, the tent cities, the, the homeless people. It's not a, it's not confined to even one spot. It's throughout the city, and it's not only Las Vegas. Go to any city. Go to L.A. Go to Portland. Go to Seattle. I've been traveling a year now. Uh, I've seen a lot of places, um, and I see the same thing. And there's hopelessness and despair, and that's part of the social engineering. And when the collapse comes and some of the underprivileged classes, the the, uh, shackled runners, um, they're they're going to come out with a vengeance, and they're going to – they're going to seek revenge, and uh, it's going to be unfortunate that uh, who the enemy is, is is convoluted. So when the collapse comes, people think that there's going to be an expectation that we can uh, overcome and um, come out a better society, a better world. It, probably not. Those in control are going to be sitting up in their uh, secluded, whether it be underground or protected uh, uh, zones, uh, how, how many people? 500 million is, is the goal out of, uh, what are we, but maybe 10, getting close to 10 billion people. That's a lot of people that's going to have to die. And I'm going to promise you, me and you, we're on that list. Well, you know, if, if that, if that happens to come, then worry's over, you know, that's it. Well, for you and me, maybe. <clears throat> There'll be survivors. Well, be well, of, course, of course there will be, but um, we're looking 
the uh, what the Star uh, Wars. Here, uh, here's, here, here's 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 the, here's the thing though about people like us and uh, versus uh, the the city dwellers, the government uh, dependents, and uh, we understand. But I mean, if we have to survive on on minimalist type stuff, we can do it. They, we, we're not, we're not sitting around putting our hand out saying, please, please give me something, something. We don't care about their shit. We don't want their shit. But they, they've been so used to doing it, that, and that's all they know. They don't, they have no concept of how to live uh, w w without that support system of, of stolen money uh, that that they've been living off of for all this time. Um, and that's that's true whether it's of individuals or or companies or huge corporations. So, I mean, yeah, we we stand a better chance than 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 the bulk of them. You know, I was uh, I was reflecting while I was out there in the desert, and uh, well, with the uh, I've got rheumatoid arthritis and pretty severe uh, disability with it, and uh, I was thinking, you know, if I was out here in uh, it, it would take a lot of su to survive, and uh, I had to, uh, you know, say to myself, you know, I'm not physically able to uh, to do that. Now, I, I mean, I'd survive probably longer than most people, but uh, it, it's a very hard life. <laughs> and you see the same, you know, uh, on the streets with the people in the, in the streets living there. Um, and uh, I wonder, could I survive that? What if, what if I ended up there in that same place? You know. Hey, it, it, it could happen at any day. You never know. Yeah, <laughs> ain't nobody immune to it. Uh, you, no matter no matter no matter how much preparation and uh, such such put into it. But as, as long as you're mentally prepared, uh, you're you're in a better shape than than uh, somebody that that's been living, uh, you know, the cush life their whole time. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I know people like that. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people, when it's not, and again, not if, but when it happens, when the collapse comes, a lot of those people are going to be in such despair that I'm pretty sure that they're going to kill themselves, you know? Well, that'll make it easier. Yeah. Uh, and I'm writing, I'm still writing this book, and I've got a lot of more good material in my head. The uh, archived events of the end of the world and the... Uh, it's a series of zombie apocalypses, <laughs> uh, and, and Vegas. I uh, may have uh, I put a lot of good material into the uh, uh, the noodle up here for for that. If it ever gets written, well, I'd like, and, I'd like uh, to see. I'd like to see the, from the, from some of the Vegas chapters in the zombie apocalypse is uh, a horde of zombie Elvises. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but uh, in my book, uh, Zom uh, uh, Vegas uh, actually. Uh, uh, beats back the zombie apocalypse and survives. It's, uh, it'll be uh, uh, a military type control uh, at a Nellis Air Force Base type of command deal, and uh, there'll be some ugly things happening. You know, with uh, what, what you might expect under a martial law system. So, um, I anyways, I, I hope it comes to uh, to light one day or to the pages. That is. Uh, and yeah, what, uh, what do, you, do you have like a a, a working title? Yeah, it's called the archived events of the end of the world. Okay, so that 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 whole thing is it. So, yeah, the the subtitle is uh, uh, a series of zombie apocalypses, and, and it'll be small. It'll be from the uh, bath salt face eating zombie to uh, uh, minor ones that have broken out and been covered up, you know, and uh, a, a whole town maybe disappeared and like covered up, and you know, and then. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it will go back. I, there's there's just so much tying in. It crosses over to all this stuff in from science and um, back science fiction or, or or you know old horror movies, uh, including uh, um, vampires and uh, uh, werewolves and uh, a, a, you know complete fantasy fiction um, wrapped up into uh, science fact. Um, but that's the uh, that's the idea, anyways. I can part. hardly wait. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I planned on being gone a year, and I've been gone a year, and I'm not going home. It's not over. I'm going to press on, uh, no matter what it takes. Well, I mean, well, I got when you say home, deep. when you say home, you mean Arkansas? Arkansas, yeah, Ar Arkansas. Clinton, Arkansas. 
Yeah, about 20 miles out of town. Out in the hills. <clears throat> I love it there. Um, but my place is here. We were Lavoy Finnicum. He was murdered two years ago today. Today? He said uh, today. Wow. Yes. Uh, when, when, I'll back up here. When I met Lavoy in 2014 out in Buckerville, um, and I introduced myself, uh, Vince Neasley from UCY.TV, uh, What Matters Worldwide? I said, let me ask you what matters to you. He said, it matters how you stand. And he also said, not to me at that time, but he said, uh, we were born for this time. This time that we live is the first time in human history that we can communicate literally face-to-face around the world in real time. We have the chance to get to know each other and to learn and to have some acceptance of some differences. But find that common, what is right and good. Like I said, that voice inside of us tells us, unless it's broken, if you've gone and been so bad for so long, you can't come back. And these are the people that, that we're dealing with. Let's forget the, the dumb shit. And let's let's work on what matters worldwide. Stand together and oppose that. Because like I said, the first time in history right now, we have a chance to tip this world right side up and take control. And, and we're on a precipice right now. Because we're either going to sink or swim. We're going to die by the billions. Forget the millions that have died throughout these past wars and this military industrial complexes and the uh, financial complex that uh, that we're subject to, this occupation that we're under. We need to change the hearts and minds of people and not by, uh, you know, calling uh, left and right and, and uh, black and white and so forth. We're in a serious fight. And in you haters, I hope you're listening over on Twitter. Uh, goblin lies is a mouthful. That's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, go on and play your games, but you ain't got enough bait to trap me. I, I won't bite. Uh, you, you ain't as, you're not very smart. Let's just put it that way. And Tom Lockhart Stewart pointed you out. You know who you are. So play on. Play on. You make, yeah, you're, you're showing your stupidity. Yeah, well, your, all I got to say is, I don't care who you are or what you do. Um, you do it. I, I have no problem. I have all kinds of whatever things you like or not like. As long as you ain't hurting nobody else and you ain't messing with nobody else's property, go for it. I got nothing, no no care about what anybody else does other than that. I, I don't give a crap about no race, religion, sex, wh- whatever. Any of these little divisions, age, uh, place of where you live, I couldn't care less. I don't care about no freaking borders. I don't, I don't care about, uh, you, you know, what, what language you speak. Just don't go out and mess with anybody else and their shit. And I'm fine with that. And then everything, every, if, if everybody kind of, you know, uh, obeyed those, those, basically the non-aggression principle, which is which is the core of it all, then everything would be fine. But as long as you got some kind of ruling class over you, you're not going to get that. And the only way to get rid of that ruling class, since since they uh, control the hearts and minds that you've been speaking of, uh, by 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 stealing from everybody and, and handing little dribbles out to a few folks. Because they they depend on those few dribbles. They want those dribbles, uh, whatever they, those may be. Uh, and they 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 they're going to get you scared and thinking this guy over here or this guy over here is going to come and get you if it weren't for them. Well, that's that's a load of bullshit too. Because the only ones coming to get you are the ones telling you that that somebody's coming to get you. <laughs> it's the boogie man. Hey, you know, I was telling my buddy Kenny from Arkansas yesterday. Uh, I said, let's look at this. What it was crime. Uh, let, let's let's look at the uh, trespassing, okay? <clears throat> so if, imagine, if you will, you live down the street, and you walk down the corner, and there a corner cuts across their little trail, goes around, cuts through this man's yard. People been walking that way for years, right? Going to to school, going to grocery store, whatnot. Uh, you're crossing this man's property, but it's it's been an easement. Nobody uh, has complained, and uh, you're not trespassing now. 
let's say he put up a fence. Well, we can get into some issue there about uh, access. But if you know, if you had to take an extra, uh, you know, uh, a three, four, and a five on your hypotenuse uh, uh, triangle there, <laughs> you know, uh, okay, so be it. You don't have the right to cross there anymore, really. But if it was the only trail to uh, uh, over to the clubhouse, then m- maybe yeah, uh, the kids ought to have the right to keep going that way. Now let's say they go over there and they they put them up a block of wood and get up over and look over the fence over in the backyard by the swimming pool to look at this fellow's wife laying out there sunbathing. Well, that's definitely become a trespass there, right? So some things are obvious, and others might be a little harder to understand, but as I say, I think most people know the difference between right and wrong. Uh, well, you would hope so. You yeah. would hope so. In this, and, in this world today, it's pretty hard to say. People do all kinds of weird shit, eating their Tide Pods. And <laughs> and what is that? I seen that. <laughs> and then somebody pointed, they said uh, they missed the chocolate fountain <laughs> underneath the car. They got the oil draining out. What is this Pod uh, eating these Tide Pods? Uh, is pods there about? something that started? I don't know when it started out. A couple of weeks ago, I started seeing these memes popping up, and I had to look and see what the hell this is. And it's a apparently a substance, some kind of internet bullshit Tide Pod challenge. And these kids are eating these it's, it's poisonous little packets of laundry soap. Do they get high on it or something? No, no. It's yeah. just like something stupid they do because somebody challenged them to it. <laughs> Uh, so, I think I'll so, have chocolate so, on so, mine. So, so you say people know the difference between right and wrong. There, There is some question there. <laughs> I think Goober got it. There's always a supply of useful idiots. Yeah, there is. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to play some more videos here, man. Right on. And uh, So you going to hang on? You bet. All, All right. I'll, meet up. I'll go get my player. So when you bring me back, okay. in, it'll take you, 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 you Well, you don't. You probably don't have video capability. Yeah? No. Well, you're, you're going to miss out though. And then on this first vid. All right. Uh, well, I'll I'll dance around here and y'all can well, just it, imagine. It, it's it's it's, it's it. not a, it's not a music vid. <laughs> I'm making my own. <laughs> There you go. This is uh, the trailer for Quentin Tarantino's uh, next film. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a classic, to be sure. Focus, doing a Hocus Pocus. Uh, oh yeah, he did play a little, uh, he did play a little flute in there, Vinny. Uh, anyway, before that, eight hey, Rome, Rome's request, Samantha Fish, with Money to Burn. Now, I, I, I know, I've played a lot of Samantha Fish here on the show, over the many weeks, months, uh, but nobody other than me has ever requested Samantha Fish. So, uh, it does my heart good to see somebody else requesting the fish woman. I love her. Uh, anyway, we kicked it off there with Quentin Tarantino's uh, Star Trek. <laughs> That's some funny stuff. All right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, man. I tell you. <laughs> some, uh, some, some, some interesting thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't that be something? Um, <laughs> Boy, I tell you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so that did sound a little bit like Jethro Tull there at the end, didn't it? Well, he, Ian he, Anderson. He, he, did, he did play some flute there, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's that factor. That, uh, you know, whenever you hear flute, rock, rock flute. You're gonna you're gonna be thinking about uh, Jethro Tull. Yeah, that, yeah. for sure. So uh, the shoot to kill cover up out here in Nevada. Um, that that was kind of the policy for the for the Bundy Ranch roundup. Yeah, if y'all don't really know the fullness of what went on, it's basically what we're looking at is RICO violations. It's like a a mob 
how they come along and uh, control the the crime. And uh, that's that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a judge who's practicing the law from the bench. She's uh, there for the prosecution, obviously not there for justice. But blood, justice is blind. Well, you've got to be blind not to have been able to see this. We, we've got the uh, we've got the haters we've contended with and the infiltrators, and uh, you know we're at we're at war, and uh, it's going to have to uh, it's going to have to be one without the uh, the point of a gun. Um, but that point of the gun we was talking about no dapple, you know those guys they showed up and sprayed them down in freezing weather zero degrees with water. I don't think they'd have done that if the Indians had had guns. They probably would have just started with bullets. I, I, I imagine you're right. Um, now, now for for those not uh, too familiar with what Rico's about, why, why don't you explain the Rico situation? Well, it is what it was. It was created so that they could uh, indict mobsters, um, showing that they're operation a cons- uh, operating a conspiracy uh, operating a conspiratorial uh, criminal operation. You know, these people are in conspiracy one with another. And if you don't believe in conspiracy theory, um, try conspiracy facts on because uh, that's that's the normal. That is the normal. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh... Well, I was saying uh, I was, what, two or three weeks now, Miss Hal, uh Man, I've been doing the post production there for quite a while. I don't even remember how long. Two years, maybe. What's that uh, again? Doing the post production from for for Hal there behind the woodshed. On oh Sundays. right. Um. Yeah, it's it's been a big part of my life, and uh, I'm going to get me a solar charger, so I'll have uh, I'll be able to access more of my uh, my phone while I'm out there in the desert. Plus, I'm upping my plan from. Uh, the six gig gigs or megs or whatever it is to uh, twenty one, so I'll have more uh, more ability to listen. You have to be kind of chintzy with my uh, well, I had to be with my battery and also with my uh, with my data out there. Sure, but, uh, I'll have more 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 range. Uh, and I was saying I would really I could really use a producer to help uh, if uh, somebody here is interested in getting involved. Uh, um, yeah, let me know or let Grimner. Um, if you're on Facebook especially, or even if you're just doing uh, YouTube, uh, some of my videos are, are being picked up, like I said, by Jay Grady, uh, uh, Valley uh, uh, Valley Forge Network, uh, Mrs. B. Stacy. Uh, I, I don't remember if L.O.K. has picked up any. Um, there's also uh, Disgruntled G.I., and uh, there's some other uh, smaller YouTube channels that I've come across that have uh, picked some up. So even if you don't have Facebook, even if you could just pick up and uh, download the video from uh, the other channels and put it up here at Real Liberty Media and, uh, you know, bring the recognition back over here as well. And uh, the the folks are being pretty good about, you know, uh, sourcing the credit. Um, Sometimes the mainstream media has not sourced me when referring to me. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm calling them out. They've got these rules and they, they need to buy golly. Stick to it. You know, I'm the paraphrase plagiarist, but I also include my links. And uh, shout out to Sherry Duvalle again, Readout News. Uh, she used my my picture. I, I think this makes me actually an official uh, published photographer. My uh, picture of Clive and Bundy on uh, January the 8th with his uh, not guilty button. I said, hey, what does that say right there? And he pinched it with his fingers and held the button up there. Not guilty. So. Uh, yeah. Did you hear that, Duck? Uh, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, you talked to Jules lately? No, not in a long time. Yeah, I wonder what she's doing. I haven't talked to her since she got back out of the out of the hospital out of there. That's been that's been a while now. Yeah, yeah it's been a couple months at least. Yeah. Uh, I, I lose track of time. Did you go back into the hospital? What? Oh no, well, I did not even know. Oh no, no, she didn't just get. It's been a while. It's been a few months. Okay. She, she was in the hospital. She was in bad shape. The doggies are excited. Mom and Dad's home. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, 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 Dad,
That's that, 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 that dog sounds Ahmed, upset. You little terrorist, you. <laughs> you anti hand circle. Hand circles. <laughs> and I'm tie hand. Yeah, they hear the, the yappity dap. Yeah, yeah, you can't not hear it. <laughs> <laughs> try, try as you might, you're not going to miss that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's there. It's, come here, buddy. Come here. He rode to a lot a long park. Come here, little boy. And here's uh here's Coda. He's a black lab. I was looking <laughs> I was watching him this morning and he had a <clears throat> a pot gathering all around his bed and I'm like, I wonder what I I would do if I was a dog, you know? Uh, and then I see this meme on uh Facebook that has has this yellow lab and he's all got the fancy grin, right? And he's like, I just put sticks in a non-stick pan. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me, the rebel dog. <laughs> what are, what are uh, they doing to that poor thing? <laughs> well, I think they hear mom and dad outside, and they pulled up, and the, they're going to be coming in here in a few. Oh, all right. <laughs> and that's my friend Jamie uh, Landon. And let me just say... Um, well, they've been out uh, uber goobering, uh, delivering food. <clears throat> they, they have uh, they've spent a lot of time dedicated, uh, both him and his fiance, of uh, being there to cover the trial. They've gone to different events in different parts of the country. He's from Burns, Oregon. I know you probably ain't hearing this. Yeah, I do. I'm not. If anybody got a couple of bucks, send it send it over him. He's doing a good job. Who? And, uh, that Jamie Landon. Okay. Uh, I'll grab a I'll grab a PayPal link and when, when you post this, I'll I'll catch up to you this weekend over to uh, uh, Freedoms Network and add some links. But uh, I know we're ahead of our drive here for uh, funding for uh, Real Liberty Media. But uh, if you're a rich person and you got like five bucks or twenty, yeah, send it on along. But uh, don't don't take from what's going to be coming here to uh, to Grimner for the. The servers and all that here, um, but uh, big shout out. There he is. Wait a minute. Waiting for him to unlock the door. He put the put the key in the wrong lock. <laughs> I locked the top or the bottom instead oh, of the bottom God. or the top. <laughs> and there he is, right there. Jamie Landon began a big round of applause in his fiance. Ray, Jamie, and fiance. Plugged in. <laughs> And uh, we're doing live radio right now and uh, talking about you two and the dog saw so not but Say uh, hi, JB. PayPal account. Jamie, a J A M E Y, Landon, L A N D I N, right? Uh, PayPal. Uh, PayPal's just Jamie L. Oh, okay, Jamie L, PayPal account. And uh, yeah, uh, just five bucks even. It'll help because these guys are running back and forth, uh, gas. What did uh, Flash say? He said your backup singer is right, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> get along, little doggy. Uh, yeah, I meant to uh, get the lyrics to that, and I got my harmonica with me, and the coyotes are yapping out there in the desert. Uh, I, I was wanting to sing the cattle call. Oh, the coyotes. Yeah, the cattle are what's, that, what's that tune? No. What's that tune? Martin Short did in the uh, Three Amigos. <laughs> you, remember, you remember that movie, Three Amigos? Martin Short, he's he's, he's putting huh? somebody, so Steve Martin, to sleep or something. <laughs> I forget. Uh, that was a funny ass movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, of course, the jerk is a classic. Oh, the jerk, don't yeah. need, well, Except for my lamp. I need my lamp. My dog. But, yeah, three, you know, three amigos, Chevy Chase and uh, Steve Martin and, and uh, Martin Short. Uh, hmm. that, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, that's perfect. Plays and saddles, yeah. I need an outside fire, baked beans, and a single Oh, yeah, and a farting contest. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> like You'd be farting ducks all night. <laughs> oh man! All right, man. Well, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let you off of here. I got to do some uh, final stuff and play a little last set and 
All right, son. It's, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Appreciate the time, Grimner, and uh, appreciate everybody listening along. And uh, I'll be along Sunday, uh, and uh, I'll pick up uh, at least this week. Uh, I'll, I'll jump back in for some post production for uh, Howl Over Behind the Woodshed. That's uh, noon o'clock Pacific on Sunday. Uh, we'll right. see y'all here. And uh, if any of my trolls are listening, uh, I love you, man. <laughs> Peace out. Later. All right. Mr. Vincent Easley there chiming in for most of the evening with us here on the Freakers Ball with Grimnir. Uh, Moose Girl out on the town having a good time. She deserves it after, uh, you know, she had had a rough week. Uh, Let's just say. Uh, Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play uh, play some more songs here. I'll be back after this. Uh, So stick around, listen to the music, have a good time. We shall return. This first track, uh, by the way, this is uh, Hansel's idea of a good night out on the town. And here are the Bayern Mädels. Oh, yeah, Christopher Amoroso there with his swampy version of Black Betty. Uh, before that, for the Cowboy Tech, David Crosby and what are their names? What are their names? Who are those bastards? Uh, anyway, we kicked it off there for Hansel Die Twinnies in Biner Madels. Uh, two girls playing Saraisha Harmonica. Uh, accordions on roller skates. <laughs> so, so, some weird funky shit there, man. Let me tell you. Uh, anyway, tomorrow, 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 stay, RLM Radio, tomorrow, at noon Eastern, Fre- Freaker, not Freaker's Ball, the Dark Table. <laughs> this, this is the Freaker's Ball. Tomorrow is the Dark Table at noon Eastern with Grammy, Mary, and Flash. And then on Sunday, I'll be on uh, in the same bat time, uh, noon Eastern, uh, with the blues. I'll be playing the blues here right here, and we'll be playing some trivia in the chat. We'll have a good old time, fun, fun stuff. And how Anthony, the afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon o'clock Pacific, behind the woodshed, opening up a big old can of whoop-ass. It's always a great day to whoop somebody's ass. And then at 7 Eastern will be Gary L. and Miss Gigi's Boo. On the road less traveled, Grammy will roll back around again next Wednesday with her show. Once again, Grammy's Rocket Chair at the normal time, 7 p.m. Eastern. Now, y'all have yourselves a great weekend. Uh, I, I, I wish I could uh, say something, but uh, just, tr- just try and ignore all that political bullshit. It don't mean nothing. It's all out there. You, you, you hear about it every day. There's Different politics, left, right, middle, whatever. Uh, this, 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 this Congress doing that, that Senate doing this, uh, some Parliament doing whatever. Just ignore all that stuff. It don't mean nothing. It's a load of bull. And and if you pay attention to that, you're missing the big picture about what's really important in the world, and that's having a good time. Yes, you need to uh, stand back, and, and, and it's good to understand what they're what it is that they're doing. But 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 just let it roll off you. Don't don't take none of that uh, into your head and into your heart, because it's it's just a bunch of crap. So do your best to to try and avoid all that. Uh, whether they're gonna whatever games they're playing, whatever distractions they're throwing at you, none of it means nothing. <laughs> That's how that 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 ball bounces. Anyway, I'm done here. Thank y'all for coming. I'll be back again next Friday night with uh, more Freakers Ball. Hopefully, Moose Girl will be with us next week. I always love it when the Moose Girls will be uh, better than I do when I don't. And a special thanks to Mr. Vincent Easley. And thank you to everybody in the chat and everybody else there listening out there on the airwaves in other places. Y'all have a great rest of your weekend. Peace!